Good morning and welcome to Toledo First. We are so excited to have you here with us as we worship and we are in the house of the Lord this morning. So would you uh, just gather your family together, gather your friends together, whether you're worshiping um, in this city, in the state, in the country, in the, in the world today, we welcome you to our service. And what we know is that God is so able to do that which we've asked him to do. We are so blessed that God has continued to move in our presence. And we just pray today that you would be blessed by the time of worship that you experience today. Amen. God is able, he will never fail, he is almighty God, greater than all we seek, greater than all we ask, he has done great things, lifted up, he defeated the grave, raised to life,
Your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. Every season, your grace has been enough, and I'm believing the best is yet to come. The cross before me, my hope on things above, and in you, Jesus, the best is yet to come. Your presence. to hear what God has done in the lives of our people. And the song that we're going to sing this morning is titled New Wine, and we've done it before as a body. And this morning I was reminded of the words of this song as it says, in the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. See, it's in the crushing and the pressing of our lives that God is bringing forth new life. I think so many times we think, Lord, it should be all new. It should be all newness and fullness of joy. But church, I would just encourage you this morning that in those broken places where you feel like there is no hope, what comes of those seasons of our lives is beauty for ashes. God takes those seasons of brokenness and those seasons of discouragement and those seasons of anxiety and he restores us and he makes something new out of us. The potter takes the broken pieces of clay and he puts them into the fire and he lets them melt into the purest forms and he brings that out and he says, this is the newness that I desire in you. See, out of this crushing and out of this pressing, a new wine comes, which is sweet and it's it's good to the taste. And this morning, I want you to be encouraged. If you feel like this season has been an agonizing season of crushing and pressing, be encouraged because God is making new wine out of you to be used for his glory, to be used in a way that you've never been used before, to go to greater depths with him, to go to greater mountaintops with him because he sees you and he's using this season to mold you into what he desires for you to be. In seasons of difficulties and despair, 
we tend to want to run for the hills yeah. instead of running to Jesus Christ. We cannot sit back and let our circumstances become greater than the faith that we have in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In moments of despair, we need to ask God to come alongside of us and help us. We have to be able to rise up and be greater than the things that is hurting our heart. We know that with God, all things are possible. And he is calling us. God is calling us to rise up and stop being afraid. To rise up and cry out to him. God is for us. And he says, if God is for us, the Bible said, as God is for us, who can be against us? In moments when we're called to stand down, we can stand down, but we don't have to be in despair. We don't have to let the enemy take us down. We can rise up and let our faith be greater than it ever was before. We can stand up and cry out to Jesus Christ because he hear our heart. He knows what is going on in our lives today. And he is asking us, he is beckoning us to not to give up and to not to give in. Because Satan wants to take the glory. Satan wants the glory for everything that is happening here on this planet. But today we are going to stand up. We are going to cry out to our Lord God Almighty. And we are going to let him be the one that dictates to our lives. We are going to give him the praise and the glory. And we are going to worship him in everything that is going on. We are going to sing praise and we are going to worship our creator. God is calling on us to not be afraid. He is calling on us to stand up, to run to the cross of Jesus Christ. When we feel like we can't put one foot more in front of the other, he says, come to me, my child. I am here for you. I love you with an everlasting love. Father God, this morning, we come before your throne of grace. You are calling out the dry bones to come to You are calling us to And you are beckoning on us, Father God, to be the light in midst of darkness. You are calling on us, Father God, to speak truth, to speak Jesus Christ, and to let the world know that God is not dead, but he is alive. And he knows what is happening in our world today. But this is coming to an end. It's coming to an end. And people will rise up with a new voice. People will rise up with new strength. And all these dry bones that have been in dormant for so long, God is calling them to life. We are going to speak truth. We are going to speak life. Father God, to thee be the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us here today at Toledo First Online. Please forgive us with all the technical difficulties we're having this morning, but we just know that God is here and he's in the midst. What a great time of worship and a great prayer from uh, Sister Lynn this morning. Um, if this is your first time with us, as you, uh, uh, we want to say welcome here to Toledo First. 
Uh, for the rest of us, if you know, notice, we are in our church building this morning, and so um, we are transitioning, so we are moving in the right directions, and we don't know when our church will open back up, but right now we know we are moving in the right directions. I also like to apologize. I typically do not wear a hat, <laughs> but uh, uh, Pastor Darren needs a haircut, and you should never cut your hair yourself, so, um, but <laughs> God is still good no matter what my hair looks like, Amen. And so um, we just want to say, if this is your first time here with us, we just want to encourage you to uh, uh, comment within our feeds, whether you're on Facebook, Vimo, or YouTube. Um, the best places to uh, stream us, though, is not on Facebook. Uh, YouTube or Vimo are the best places. You can actually get the Vimo through our website at ToledoFirst.org. Um, Today is one of my favorite services, and that's the reason why I'm a little frustrated this morning with the technical issues, but, but hey, we know that that's part of the game. But today is one of my favorite services that we have multiple times throughout the year, and it's Testimony Sunday. And I just love to hear what God is doing in the lives of his people and how much he loves us and cares for us and the hope that he gives for us. But if you will either turn in your uh, Bibles this morning or scroll uh, to 1 Peter 3.15, it'll also be on your screen momentarily but we, we typically, when we do Testimony Sundays, we just kind of open it up to our congregation. I really don't ask people uh, if they would give a testimony. I typically just open the, uh, the floor with a microphone and ask people to give a testimony. But that's hard to do today <laughs> because we're all online. So during the week on Facebook, our Church Center app, um, also on um, our Church Center app, and also on our website, we have asked people to send in videos of their testimony of what God is doing through them in this season. And uh, so we have received a few of them this morning, and we're going to listen to those in a few moments. But first, I just want to encourage you, what, what is a testimony, and why is it so important for us to, to share our testimonies and know what our testimonies are? So here at 1 Peter 3.15, uh, Peter is teaching us the importance, and it says this, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. Peter is teaching us here that, uh, that we always should be prepared to share our story, our personal testimony. We live in a society today that most people may not come to church with us if we invite them, or they may not even come into our home when we have a community group within our home. But what they will most likely do is listen to your story about how, how God has changed your life. Jesus teaches us in Matthew 5, 16, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds or your actions and glorify your Father in heaven. See, Jesus is telling us that we need to let our light shine. See, Jesus, who lives now within us, shines through us. And so when we are acting in the midst of chaos like we're in today, people should be able to see Jesus in us. That they say, what's different about you? Why aren't you feeling chaos? And I've had people ask this question, and I love it, because sometimes I feel like I'm a little overwhelmed, but people keep saying, you don't seem overwhelmed. You, don't, you seem at peace of what's going on. And, and, and I would think that, you know, in your situation as a pastor, that you would be a little frazzled right now. And I'm like, no, I'm not, because I know that Jesus is in the midst of all this. And I speak Jesus over every circumstance. I know that God will never leave me nor forsake me, but he is in the midst of this, and he gives me the peace and the hope that I know that we're going to get through this. And so I let my light shine in, in the actions that I'm doing, in the words that I am saying, because the joy of the Lord lives within me. The definition of the word testimony in the Oxford Dictionary is this. Testimony means a public re recounting or a religious conversion or experience. I believe that there is two different types of testimonies. Now, this is Pastor Darren. This isn't something that's out there. But I believe there's two. The one is your, your personal story, which is your, your time that you were saved. And then there's the, a journey testimony or a growth testimony, if you will. A personal te testimony is your story of your new life in Christ. It typically consists of three parts, your life before Christ, your life with Christ, or your Christ moment, and then what your new life is now with Christ. 
So, you know, my testimony may look something like this. Before I knew Christ, I, I lived a very worldly life. I, I looked to do everything on myself, fix everything myself. And when I was overwhelmed, I would turn to alcohol or I would turn to uh, premarital sex or something like that. That was what my life was before. But man, when I, Christ got my attention, when Christ got my attention through his Holy Spirit, there was such a move of God that he changed my life. And now you see who you see today. I am somebody who trusts the Lord, that the light of Jesus Christ shines through me because my faith is in him, not in my ability, not in the ability of character and who is he. And so those are how you would share your testimony, a little bit more in detail, but I'm just trying to give you an example but a journey testimony or a growth testimony is as we're living this life for, with our new life with Jesus, we are always being stretched and we're always growing. We know when Jesus discipled the 12 disciples, he gave an invitation to have a relationship with them, but he also challenged them on behaviors. And the same thing, God does the same thing with us. Jesus today still does that with us. He has invited us, and so we're part of his family now. We're part of his, we're, we're sons and daughters of the great I am. We're part of that family, and Jesus is still teaching us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so as he is, as he is challenging us, he challenges us to grow in our faith and draw closer to him. A journey testimony is a part of your story when you, are, you experience a challenge or a specific situation in your new life with Christ that caused you to grow in him. In both of these types of testimonies, God gets the glory for his grace, his mercy, and his love. And for his grace, his mercy, and his love. So I want to share with you this morning what God has been doing in my life before we go to the, our video testimonies. And in, in the scripture that the Lord has really laid on my, li uh, laid in my heart, and, and I've repeated it over and over in this season, is found in Mark chapter 4, 35 from 41. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version, because that's the one I like to study from. I usually preach from the NIV, because most people carry the NIV, but I, I like to study in the New King James Version. And it says this, On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he, as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, and that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and he rebuked the wind. And he said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? What a powerful words. The words I want you to hear there is peace, be still. Peace, be still. And this season, as your pastor, you know, you know, you get to see what I do on Sunday mornings when I get up in here and I teach, and we get to be together and worship the Lord together, and we get to hear the word of God together that the Lord has placed on my heart to teach. But there's other things that a pastor does as well, is, is that I consistently are praying and trying to care for the flock that, that I am in, in charge to. But I also get to oversee, and Pastor Todd helps with this, is overseeing the building and the property and the business side of the church that we don't talk a whole lot about. And there's reasons for that because we want, we're a church, but there's always a business side of the church. See, on March 25th, we, we had to close our daycare. Our daycare brings in 60% of our church's income to pay for our building, our utilities, and, and for our property and all, all the things that come with uh, owning a, a building. And so when we closed on the, 20, on the 25th per the government's order, um, that night I was downstairs. The family had went to bed and I was downstairs and I literally, my chest started hurting. My heart was pounding. I felt cold sweats. I thought, Lord, you're going to take me. I'm having a heart attack right now. And I was trying to get to the staircase because I thought I was going to have to uh, get to Heather so she can call the paramedics. And, and, um, and then I just started praying and this scripture came to me. And I said to this situation, peace be still. Peace be still. 
And I began to intercede in tongues and I began to pray in tongues. I began to pray for, for the teachers that I had to lay off without pay and they weren't eligible for unemployment for churches don't pay into unemployment. And so they couldn't even apply for unemployment. And I'm like, God, what are we gonna do? How, how are they gonna take care of their families? How are they gonna pay their bills, Father God? And I just began to pray and I began to intercede them and I know that my God will never leave me nor forsake me, that my God's in the middle of this storm. And just like Jesus said, do, do you not have faith that you can speak into that storm and say, peace, be still, and that storm must come to still. And so I began to pray that, and I began to speak, peace, be still, into the name of this storm. And, and God just brought this peace to me, and I began to calm down, and I began to become peaceful in this situation. And God said, I'm in the midst of this. And then we began to work with our insurance and we began to work with the government and the subsidies that they were giving us. And, 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 and I'm like going, and then I became stressed. Working with those people could become very stressful. But God also taught me in this season how to be patient and all things are going to come through. And then we began, it just started to happen, a grant we applied for, we, we received it. Uh, uh, the stimulus package that we were supposed to receive, we received that. Um, a, a, a rebate that we were supposed to get because of this, we received that. And, and, and we haven't received the insurance yet, please continue to pray for that. But here's the thing is, is that God began to provide that this week we were able to pay our family, not just for the last two weeks, but we were able to recoup what they, what they missed from the prior two weeks. And now we were able to take care of our employees. We're able to take care and we're able to pay our bills. In March, we saw a record number of tithes and offerings coming to our church. This month, our tithes and offerings are up. Why? Because people are paying tithes on their stimulus. People are paying tithes on their income tax. People are giving when they never gave before. God is blessing our church because of our obedience, because we didn't allow this storm to cripple us. We just said, peace be still to this storm. And God is providing and our people are being provided for. There is no one in our church at this moment that has been diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, COVID, uh, uh, that is a blessing because our God is protecting us. God is watching over us. Now, there are some of our, or some of our members that work in these essential employees. There are essential employees and working in places of retail and law enforcement and, and, and nurses and doctors, frontline people, but God is protecting them in this season. Yes, some of them are being tested, but I believe that they're going to be negative. And if they're not negative, I know my God has their hands on them because this is what we need to focus on. And because the, there is a 98% recovery rate from COVID-19. This means that there is a little over one and a half percent of the people who are dying from get it, we're going to die. We need to focus on what God is doing and that over 98% of the people are recovering from this. And that's what we need to stand on is our God is protecting us and our God is with us. I'm so excited what God is doing. Also within this season, if, if you don't know, in our last service, you have met three of our little girls that have come into our home and part of our family right now as they come into the foster care. And so we have been locked down in our homes with, uh, with three additional girls and then we have to do homeschool. And I want to tell you it's stressful we're lucky that our 19-year-old daughter still lives with us, and uh, my wife is working from home. I come in just a few times a week. Pastor Ty comes in on the other days so that we're able to pay the bills and take care of certain things here around the building. But uh, God has blessed us in this time is unifying our family, even with our new girls in our lives, and unifying us. And, and it can become overwhelming, especially with the homeschool part of it. But God is, God is in the midst of that, and he's brought such a peace into our home, even in the midst of all the chaos going on and, and it's all because we put our focus on God and we know that he's in the midst of it and we just pray peace peace be still in the midst of this and I want to encourage you today pray peace in your life uh, memorize this scripture that Jesus spoke to the storm and he said peace be still and the storm calmed and we want to speak that into this coronavirus. And, and we want to pray like Moses prayed when, when he prayed for God not to destroy the Israelites. 
He said, if you destroy, you pull them out of Egypt and you destroy them, that will make people look down on you, Lord God. But you deserve the glory, Lord. And, and, and so, so God did not destroy the Israelites, but it was hard to find goodness. It was hard to, it was hard to find goodness in the people, but, but God listened to his child, Moses. And then we pray, and we need to also pray like Elijah who prayed the fire from heaven. And we need to believe, God, we need you to come from heaven and burn up this coronavirus. Because if it disappears at a snap of a finger, that could only tell us that only God is the kind of God who can do that. And our God is the true God, the God of Isaac, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That he is the one true God and we will turn to our God and know that he is with us and he will never forsake us. And when we speak peace, be still in the midst of the storm. When we say be gone in the name of Jesus, this storm will be over. This storm will be gone and we'll be set free that we will be delivered from our oppressor. We'll be delivered from the fear that is crippling us and we will stand strong and know that our faith in our God is bigger than our fear that we have what's going on around around us. God gives us a peace, give us a patience that we know that you're moving. Lord, I pray that you will financially deliver people, Father God, and provide the financial needs they need. Lord, deliver them from their sickness, Lord God. And God, I pray, wipe this coronavirus off, Father God, so this world will know that you are the true God, the living God that still sits on the throne, that is still active and performing miracles today in this world, Father God. Lord, we pray this and we claim this in the name of Jesus. We trust you with everything. Jesus, Jesus. Some of us need a miracle. Some of us need a miracle in our lives. And our God is in the business of doing miracles. Miracles is not just a time that is written in scriptures and it's not an Old Testament thing or even just a New Testament thing that's written in the, the, in the Bible. God is performing miracles. We've seen miracles in this church. We, we've, we've, we've seen miracles outside of this church and, and our God is still in the, in the business of doing miracles. But what we got to do is know and we got to pray and ask him, Lord, will you do a miracle today? Will you do a miracle today? You know, there's a song that, that I, I play regularly and I sing regularly because it reminds me of who our God is. And that song, and, and, and I've sang it before, is you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, and there is no one else like you. You are great, you do miracles so great, and there is no one else like you, Jesus. And there is no one else like you, Jesus, I pray right now, in the name of Jesus, your children need a miracle. Your children need a miracle. Our church needs a miracle. The brothers and sisters of our church need a miracle. And Father God, we know that you are the great I am. And you are great and you do miracles today, Father God. I pray for the one that is fearful because they, they, they feel like, where's my finances? and How I take care of my bills? But Father God, you are moving in the midst of that. Father God, you're moving in the midst of someone's health. You're moving in the midst of somebody's mental health, Father God. Those who are being anxious, Lord God, they are claiming their miracle. They are claiming their healing in the name of Jesus. They don't speak anxiety over themselves anymore, but they speak the miracle of the living God, the God who delivers, the God who sets us straight on the path, Father God. For you are a God who performs miracles, Lord. Father, I pray for a miraculous comfort, Father God, for those who have lost, Father Lord, those to COVID-19, Father Lord. Lord, I pray for those who are still working in this central, uh, as in central employees, as frontline employees, mail carriers, uh, store workers, Father God. I pray such a peace and a comfort, Lord God, over them, Lord. That they walk in the peace and joy of knowing who you are, Lord God, and that their light will shine. 
that their light will shine in the darkness, Lord. Lord, we just praise you and we glorify you, Lord. And not only is God moving in my life and doing great things in this season, that I can walk into the joy of what God is doing in my life, in my family, and in this church. But God is doing so great things in the lives of the people in our church. And this morning, you're only going to see a few of them. But there is so much good that is going on. I am seeing brothers and sisters in Christ step out of their comfort zones. I see people trusting the Lord more than they've ever trusted the Lord before. And so it's like God is unifying families. God is doing so many great things in this, during this time. And those are the things that we need to focus on. And so as we play this video, and they'll play one after another. But as we play this video, I want you to come in agreement in the miracles that God is doing in these families. Families, the miracles that he's done in my family he too can do these miracles in your family and and he probably already is but we just got to focus on those miracles and focus on God and what he is doing in your life and not on the things that's going on in this world so I hope you enjoy these testimonies and I will come back afterwards for some final thoughts and then we'll do our prayer like we do on a regular basis uh, uh, so go ahead and enjoy these videos this morning Hi, everybody. How are you? I hope you're all doing well. Um, I've been asked to give a little testimonial of how God has been working in my life, especially over the last month during the, during the coronavirus. Um, he's working in my life in, in many ways like he is others. Um, first and foremost, I get so much more Bible time, uh, which I absolutely love. It's the most near and dear time I have on a day. Um, I've also had the chance to spend a lot of time with Amanda and Kylie and Owen, which just brings my heart so much joy. I've had the opportunity to FaceTime and speak to my son, Quinn, on the phone almost every single day. Um, yeah, I've had the opportunity to, to serve others as well um, in many ways. And some people, I'm going and getting them groceries. Sometimes I'm buying people that don't have enough money some groceries. Um, sometimes I'm get, doing running errands for them. Um, and if any of you need something done, picked up, please let me know. I'm happy to help. Um, but yeah, in fact, even my own family, um, they, they've been giving me some money to support me in my efforts to buy other people groceries. Uh, for some of the less fortunate in our community. Um, and a lot of the people that uh, I work with from the addictions are having are struggling greatly with this um, in many ways. And so I'm uh, helping them almost daily, if not hourly, um, which has been a lot of fun. I'm saying um a lot. I noticed that. I'm going to try to stop that. I feel that I'm getting closer to my mother during this whole thing, oddly enough. I'm getting better at cutting my own hair which is probably needs to be done tonight. And uh, I think I'm getting good enough that I can probably include this little rascal in there and get his hair cut tomorrow. Say hi, everybody. Hello. So anyway, so yeah, there's that. And, uh, and I've truly learned a great deal about putting trust and faith in God and to not worry, uh, for he has a plan for me that is far greater than any government shut mandated shutdown or any global pandemic. Um, I, I remember all the time that God scattered the entire earth. Hundreds of thousands of people were moving from country to country, town to town, thousands of miles. Mary and Joseph on a donkey. All so that we could have a verse in the Bible and the Old Testament would be fulfilled. And Jesus was born in Bethlehem. God did that. Um, that was, he wasn't Herod. That was God. And uh, I'm wondering maybe if he is having a stay at home to fulfill a different prophecy. Maybe it's Daniel. Maybe it's Isaiah. I'm going to find out. If I keep reading my Bible every day, I'm going to pray about it. And uh, we'll get this figured out. And we'll all get through this together. Um, please read your Bible every day. Take post-it notes. Do something. Find all the places where he tells you not to live in fear. To all the places where he tells you, I've got this. Uh, Matthew 8, 26 tells us to live in faith, to live in faith. Ye of little faith, have faith, because uh, God's got this. All right, that's all I got. Thanks, everybody. Hope to see you soon.
most of you know that I've been in Iraq, um, so she's had to put up with that, but been a lot of kind of crazy stuff race recently. Um, back in January, we, we sold, finally sold our house in, in Missouri. Um, so that kind of relieved some things. And then, um, we, we thought that it was perfect timing because it's like the day after we closed, um, we went to an auction and we were the high bidders. We thought we had this farm and we waited like two weeks and they said they weren't even going to put in our offer. So we had to start looking again and we looked at several houses. We thought we were going to get a couple of different places. And, um, one of the ones we looked at, we decided we wanted a different one. We tried to get that. By the time we tried that, the other one that we were looking at was off the market. Um, so we were, so we decided to go ahead and, and, um, try to get the house that we're getting right now. So when we did, uh, they, they accepted our offer and, um, it was, it was more than what we had closed on our, you know, the, what we got from closing on our house in Missouri. So of course we were going to get a mortgage for the rest of it. So, um, we went all the way through and a week before we were supposed to close last Friday, um, we, they said that because I had come home, um, at the beginning of February after I had a injury while we were getting attacked in Iraq, I came home for surgery. And of course, when, once I got home, they canceled all elective surgeries until further notice. So I'm on my workers working this comp right now. And because of that, then they finally said last Friday that they couldn't give me the mortgage because I'm on workman's comp. So, and through all of this, you know, we, um, I don't know how many people know, but we own a comic book shop. And so some people have wondered about how, how we're doing with that since it's been closed. So we were closed for about what a week and a half, yeah, two weeks. But we were really blessed because he was on workman's comp, so we still got a little bit of money coming in, and we were able to use that money to go buy a new sewing machine and material to make masks. And that's actually helped us a lot. It's going to help get it, keep us going as well as we were able to donate to other people who needed them that had to get back out in the workforce. Yeah, so we donated to a lot of people in the healthcare industry, um, and we kind of took donations, and then it got to where we were getting so many orders for them. Um, you know, if people were people were paying for them, and so that helped pay for the material and having to get the sewing machine because we couldn't find ours. A lot of our stuff is still packed up from when we moved up here because we knew we were getting ready to get another house, um, and we gave away a lot of masks to the church. And there's several people who, when we, when we wanted to give masks, they wanted to donate or um, wanted to at least pay for material or something. And, and people like that, we, we told them we don't want it. You know, we, that's, we don't want to take any money for it because that's our blessing. So with, with that, we'll go back to the house and, well... Let me go back to the shop. When, when we had to close down, um, we had already gotten to where uh, we already had the rent for the next month for the shop. So we didn't have to worry about it all this month. Um, when we open the shop, we when we make our masks, we take them into the shop and people pick them up there. We were working a lot till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning here at the house um, sewing masks and it got to where it consumed all our time and we, we decided that, you know, so we still have family time and free time that we would only make the masks while we're at the shop. So this last week we've opened from like noon to six and just made masks while people come in and pick them up. Well, people have also been buying other things in the shop while they come to pick up their masks. So back to the house. Um, when, when they told us last Friday that we couldn't get the loan, 
and we were supposed to close tomorrow the 24th. So um, we, we were trying to figure out what we were going to do. And Sunday we decided we're just going to try to pool, you know, all of our, everything that we have, you know, what the money we had from selling the other house and all of our liquid assets that we have. And, um, you know, we, we had thought that I could take out a 401k and pay for it, but we didn't want to do that because, um, you know, you, you really don't want to touch that. So we were about $10,000 short last week. So Sunday we went through and we looked at everything and tried to figure it out. And when we pulled everything together, we, we got to where we were about $2,500 off. And so we told the realtor, go ahead and schedule for Friday, 24th. We're going to close. And we said that, you know, it'll, it'll happen. God will take care of it. So by what? Wednesday morning, we had to have the money by Thursday morning for the wire transfer. And by Wednesday morning, we had it plus another $400. Yeah. And yeah, that first night, I think we sold $500 on eBay, just like stuff that had been on there for quite a while. There was a couple yeah. of big comics on there that went. So we are very blessed and very fortunate. And now we get to buy our house outright and work towards completely getting out of debt and helping other people. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, he's continued to bless us when we went to do the wire transfer today. Um, by tomorrow when we close, we'll have the rent for the shop for the next month and the rent last month's rent for this house. And then we won't have a, we won't have a rent or mortgage after that. So God has truly blessed us. Um, he's provided for us even through all of this. Yes. You know, the, we, we didn't have to worry about food. We didn't have to worry about anything else. He's taking care of everything and it really, um, if I had come home on my vacation to have surgery, um, I might not be getting paid. But because they sent me home on workman's comp and everything got delayed, I'm still getting paid. So we have been, I mean, that there's no way that we could have planned it as good as God made it. Yes. So with that being said, if there's anybody out there that still needs masks, I will make them as long as you guys need them. I have most of my material posted on our Facebook page, and I will keep keep that up. But thanks for watching, and I hope that our testimony has helped somebody else, because um, I feel like we've, we've done pretty well. We've been very blessed. Hello, everybody. Me again. Pastor asked to, to uh, do some praises, and so I just... I started thinking, I'm like, well, I don't have anything big to praise on. And then the Lord just kind of rebuked me and told me, it's not the little stuff. It's the big, it's not the big stuff. It's the little stuff. And then so I started thinking about it. Oh my gosh, I've got so much to be grateful for. So here we go. First and foremost, I am so stinking grateful that he has deepened my walk with him, that I'm getting closer to him, that I'm slowing down enough to hear him more and to understand him more and go deeper into the word. Oh, that is so huge. And I praise the Lord for that. Secondly is my health, John's health, our family's health, our church family's health. I am so grateful that the Lord has protected us and kept us safe. I'm thank you, thankful for all the uh, first responders and all the people who have to work. I've been working every other week. Um, and uh, I, the fear there is just so, so, so thick. And I'm so grateful that they're pressing past the fear and they're, and they're serving the Lord and they're serving their community. I thank you for that. Praise you for that. Uh, and praise God for, your, for the protection for you. And then uh, thirdly, I'm just, I'm just so grateful for nature. I'm so grateful for the leaves coming out. I'm so grateful for the birds that I'm watching. I have this Woody the Woodpecker in the neighborhood. He, it's just one woodpecker. And he, every time I walk, he's in a different tree. I just love it. 
I love the Cardinals. I love the Blue Jays. I'm watching them. We have this baby little squirrel that I call Rocky. He is just the cutest little thing. And if you get too close to him, he starts like chattering at you, like kind of like yelling at you to tell you to get away from him. He's so cute. So he's about as big as my palm. He's really little. And we have fat squirrels in this neighborhood because we have walnut trees. So we have really fat squirrels. So this little thing is so cute. And I'm, I'm so grateful for all the flowers that I planted that are coming up. My tulips are absolutely beautiful. And if it wasn't raining right now, I'd go outside and show you some. The little stuff. I am just so grateful for the little stuff. And I thank the Lord for everything that he gives us. Uh, we have this little saying in, our, in one of our groups. If you don't know what you can be grateful for, gr be grateful for your thumbs. Try to use... Try to do anything without your thumbs. At least you'll be grateful for your thumbs. That's all I got. God bless you. Have a great day. Love you. I love you. And I miss you. Hey, happy Testimony Sunday, Toledo First family and friends. I wanted to give you guys some uh, updates of things that have been happening in my life since the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, I don't want to take up the whole service because I probably could. That's how many good things God has been doing amidst all of the trials and tribulations we're all facing. One of the things that I have seen happening is families coming together. I have seen families in our United States of America who can get a little too busy at times. My family is no exception to that. We get so busy and make sure, making sure that our families and our children have all these experiences that we forget to just be a family together. And being cooped up in the house, that is kind of forcing us to do that. It's forcing us back to dinners around the table as well as breakfast and lunch and, and all the snacking in between. But I think that's a good thing. That's a blessing. I love seeing that. I love the outreach that we've been able to do from a Kidman perspective. Typically on a Sunday, I get anywhere from 10 to 20 kids that come in to see me in the big kids church. That's not including who we, all the little people we have in our toddler classes and in our nursery. But since COVID-19, I have been able to reach not only those families that attend Toledo First, but also families of people that have never stepped foot into our church. I created about seven videos just for our Toledo First kids, just a way to connect with them, to help them um, just realize that they are not alone in this and that I'm praying for them and just something fun to do because let's face it, it's, it's tough being cooped up together all the time and sometimes we just want to have fun. I also wanted to help the parents and the families with helping them to become spiritual mentors in their own home. And so we'd made these series of videos and what was amazing to me is in my mind, I was just reaching maybe 15, 20 families. What has ended up happening is we've been reaching adults with those postings. I have actually connected with a pastor in the country of Malawi, Malawi, I think that's how you say it, in Africa. And he ministers and is building kids ministry in not only Malawi, but also Mozambique. And he also has a heart and a passion for helping our children and our families to recognize everything they were created for. They have a purpose. We all have a purpose. And guess how he connected with me? From one of those silly videos that we did and posted on Facebook page. That is amazing. That would not have happened if we didn't have COVID-19. I'm also grateful for the fact that I get to spend time with my parents. I live about an hour and a half away. My parents are getting older. And with me working two jobs, I don't get to come home very often. But with the fact that I was asked to report for my day job away from the building and work uh, what they call teleworking, I couldn't do that at my regular home because I'm sharing it with my son and his wife and their four children. And um, wouldn't have been a lot of quiet. So I decided that I would come into Vermilion where my parents live and just hang out with them and work from their home. It's a little bit more quieter. But it's allowed me time to just hang out with my parents. And that's so precious to me. Because for some of you, you might not know this, others do, I have been called into the mission field. I've been called to actually leave the United States of America at some point in my life and go abroad. 
and work in the Middle East. I've been called to the country of Syria specifically. I'm not sure when that's going to happen, but it'll probably be within the next decade. So the thought of leaving everybody that I love here is really hard. That's probably the hardest part. But now this time that I get to spend with my parents, it's so priceless. It's precious. That would not have happened if it hadn't been for COVID-19. There I go again. I thought I was going to get through something without crying, but... <laughs> It's me. Um, but anyway, those are just two of the things that I'm seeing happen. And we have to give God the glory. I thank him for that. I know that there's sad things happening. I know that we've lost people, um, people that we love, people that we care about. But in the midst of all of that, I'm still choosing to trust that God knows what he's doing. He still sits on the throne and he's still going to take everything we're experiencing and help us to expand the kingdom of heaven. He asks us to be a part of it. And I, for one, am grateful for that. The good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. All right, I've, I've gone on and enough. So we'll see you guys later. Bye. Let your light shine. This is exactly what you just heard of these four individuals that were sharing their testimony, or, or actually five individuals that were sharing their testimony, is that they were allowing the light of Jesus to shine through them, even in the midst of their storms. That God is in the midst of the storms. And I just want to say as, as their pastor, and to all of you that we didn't hear from today, but God is doing things in you guys as well. I just want to say thank you for shining your light here in Toledo, Northwest Ohio, and Southeast Michigan. These testimonies are just a few stories of what God is doing in the lives of those he loves. Let me encourage you this morning before we pray to trust that the same God that saved you now resides in you. Go and let your light shine. I want to leave you this morning with this passage before we pray again. found in the book of John chapter 14. So John 14, 15 through 31. intend to show yourself to us and not to the world jesus replied anyone who loves me will obey my teaching my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching these words you hear are not my own they belong to my father who has sent me all this i have spoken while still with you but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of, of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I'm going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not say much more to you, for the Prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. Through the power of the Holy Spirit in the lives in us, that lives in us, may we shine the light of Jesus, 
the message of Jesus' teachings to those who are all around us. Let our light shine and let us go and make disciples. Father God, we're just so thankful. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for the peace that you give to us, even in the midst of the storms, Father Lord. We speak to the storms all around us, whatever those situations may be, Lord. Help us in this journey, Father God, that we too can share at our next testimonial service what you did in our lives and how you changed us and you grew us through this situation, Father God. As Sister Fennell put into the feed this morning, God is in this COVID. God is in the COVID. God is moving in the COVID, Father God. We just praise you and we glorify you, Lord. May we seek your face, Lord. May we see you continuing to move, Father Lord. Lord, it is no surprise that 98 point something percent, Lord, is a recovery rate for this COVID-19, Lord. And the reason for that is, is because you're in the COVID, Lord. And Lord, we just praise you and we glorify you. Thank you for the miracle, the miracles in, in, in Lauren and Missy's life, Father God, in their obedience to who you are, Father God. Thank you for, uh, for us being, uh, for giving us the little things to be, to, to be thankful for, Lord God, that, that uh, Pastor Terry shared with us, God. Thank you for the things that you're doing in Pastor Tony's life and the impact that our church, through Tony and through this media, uh, through this media outsourcing, Father God, God, that Lord, that, you know, through our church, Father God, and through this COVID, Lord, and us going online, Father, more online, that people across this world are being impacted, Lord God. Lord, that Pastor Tony says that she has befriended somebody in, in, in Africa, Lord. Lord, we are seeing people watching our film from all over the world, all over our state, all over our country, Father God. And Lord, we are so thankful, Lord, that you use us to be able to impact not just our community, not just the great city of Toledo, Lord, but the world. Father God, you are sending us to the ends of the world, Lord. You are teaching us and you're showing us how to go and to make disciples. Lord, may we operate in your spirit. May we stand strong on the solid rock of who you are, Father God. We just praise you. We glorify you and we exalt you in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So this time, people have put on our social media feed some prayers that they need specifically, miracles that they want to see in the lives, in their lives, and the lives of their loved ones this morning. And so right now, Ms. Tia is going to tell me what those are, and we're going to begin to pray for the special needs, the specific needs that the body of Christ has this morning. Jack and Dallas Militer need prayers for safe travels on Monday as they're Hallelujah. heading home, and they miss all of us. We miss you too, Grandpa and, and Dallas. We just want to uh, pray for the militers as they're traveling home on Monday. They're coming back to Toledo from their time in Florida. We just want to pray. Father God, I just pray right now. Circle our, 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 our spiritual mother and father, Lord God. Thank you. For keeping them safe. Lord, we just pray right now that you would continue to keep them safe as they travel. Lord, you talk about people who let their light shine. This couple allows the light of Jesus to shine through them day in and day out, Lord God. Even when they're struggling, Lord God, the light of Jesus shines through them, Lord. Lord, I pray, Father God, as they travel, Lord, keep them safe, keep them healthy, Lord God. And Lord, I pray, Lord, I pray when they get home, Lord God, Lord, that they will be safe, Lord God, and to be able to see their family, Lord, see their church family, their, 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 their children, Father God. And Lord, we just pray right now, we circle this vehicle. We circle this vehicle. We circle them, Father God, with protection, Lord. Send your angels to protect them and guide them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amanda Gully is asking prayers for her niece, Lauren, that is struggling with infertility. Amen. Father God, we just 
Amanda, uh, uh, we pray for Amanda's niece, niece, Lauren, Father God. Yes, Lord. Lord, I just pray, Father God, just like you opened the womb of Hannah, Father Lord. I just pray yes, right God. now that you will open this womb right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever the difficulties is, Lord God, you're in the midst of that difficulty, Father. Lord, I just pray right now peace over her body, Father God. I pray healing over her body, Father God. I pray healing over her husband's body, Father Lord. I pray, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, that whatever the situation may be father God but Lord we pray for healing and deliverance from this situation Lord God and we speak life into their lives father Lord we speak new life into their lives father God we just pray right now Lord that you will open the womb father God Lord that you will provide them the child that they that they so desperately are, are calling out for father God Lord make this miracle create this miracle in this life father God and uh, uh, create this miracle in the life of Amen. Vicki Rose is asking prayer for financial difficulties and for protection over their pandemic child care center. Amen. That is truly a ministry. Amen. Vicki Rose, that's actually my mother-in-law, so we just want to go ahead and pray for her. She also owns her own daycare, and um, and it's a pandemic center. But as you guys know, a lot of people still are not sending their children even to child care because of the pandemic. So it is a financial struggle. You've heard my testimony earlier that God is moving in our church and our child care. So we want to pray that God also moves yes. in other child right. cares out there. Yes. And we're specifically, specifically the, uh, the one my mother-in-law runs. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pray for Rosewood Touch Center. Jesus. I could I had to remember it. Rosewood Center there in Jamestown, Ohio. Yes. Father God, we just pray right now, Lord. I just pray provision over, over my mother-in-law, Father yes, God. I just Lord. pray uh, protection, Lord God. I pray for financial blessings, Father yes, God. God. Well, this is a prayer praying Amen. woman. Well, this is a yes. prayer warrior, Father God. Lord, I just pray right now that you would protect her child care center, Lord. I pray that you would bring blessing into that center, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, as we begin to start opening back up our economy, Father God, that, Lord, she will have the blessing beyond blessing of what you're going to do, Lord yes. Father. And Lord, I just pray for her marriage and her family, Father yes, God. I just pray right now, Lord, that you would provide health and you would provide strength, Father God. And that you would provide uh, more than she's ever needed, Lord God. Touch her body. Heal her body, Father God. Heal all things, Lord God, that is going on in this situation, Father Lord. Father God, that I am praying and I am believing, Lord God, that Lord, that you're going to give a double bless blessing, Father God, because of her obedience, because of her faith, Father God. Lord, that she stepped out and did this pandemic thing lord god where a lot of child sinners did not do it father lord but she still stepped out in faith knowing that you're in charge lord and she wants to love on her community lord god lord i pray lord as her light shines in jamestown ohio father god i pray right now lord god that you will bless her mightily for allowing your light to shine through her words through her action and for her love for her community and god in jesus name we pray amen Janelle Williams is asking for prayer for breakthrough in those areas of our lives that we are struggling with. Amen. Amen. Breakthrough. We know that our God is a God who provides breakthrough. And so as Vanel has asked us to pray for breakthrough this morning, whatever situation you're going on in this morning, do you believe that God can break it? And so we want to pray this morning to speak peace over whatever that is in your life and say, break it in the name of Jesus. Speak the name of Jesus. We need to learn to speak life into our situations. We need to speak life into it and not damnation. Not We need to speak life life into it we need to speak that you know uh, 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 my God said that you know in the name of Jesus be healed I'm believing in the name of Jesus that I am healed I'm believing in the name of Jesus I am healed and quit speaking it I, I hear people who who, who have, uh, are struggling with a certain type of disease and, and they go around telling everybody I have cancer we need to start speaking I have been delivered from cancer I am being delivered from cancer I am being healed from cancer I'm being healed from from deafness I'm being healed from blindness I'm being healed from anxiety I'm being healed from depression because my God said be healed in the name of Jesus and I shall be healed we need to start speaking life into our situations and not death 
And I pray right now, Father God, as my sister, I come in agreement with my sister for now, Father Lord, and I pray right now. I speak life into my brothers and my sisters. I speak life, Lord God. I speak deliverance, Lord God. I speak breakthrough, Father God. That, Lord, we are not anxious people. We are not worried people. That is not our identity, Lord. Even though we may be anxious at times, whether we may be worrying some at some times, Lord. But, Lord, we are not a person of anxiety. We are not a person of worry. We are not a person who is sick, Father God. We are a person that you are going to deliver, that you are going to heal. Lord, I pray breakthrough in financial situations. I pray breakthrough in healings, Father God. I pray breakthrough into mental health, Father God. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. I speak Jesus. I speak life into these situations, Father God. I speak courage, Father Lord. I speak boldness, Lord God. I speak people stepping out into their into their calling, Lord God. The Lord, I come against the word of apathy. I come against the word, the actions of apathy, Father God. And I speak life into my brothers and my sisters, Father God. Lord, I speak light into my brothers and sisters, Lord, that they would the, through the breakthrough, Father God, through them doing as what the Smith family was doing, Father God, even in the midst of their troubles, Father God, they began serving others. They began helping others, Lord, by making these masks, Lord God. And then through making these masks, Lord God, you have brought a double portion of blessing on them, Father God. You have blessed their business. You have blessed their home. You have blessed their family, Father God. And Lord, I pray right now for my same brothers and sisters this morning who need a breakthrough in their life, Father God. May they begin to speak life into themselves. May they begin to speak life into their situation. Speak peace into their situation, Lord God. And Lord, I pray as they begin, they begin to serve. They begin to look at other people and what the needs that they need, Father God. Whether it's to go buy groceries, whether it's to go out and, and, and to make masks, whatever it shall be, Father God. Maybe it's just making a phone call and reaching out to someone else, Lord God, and showing the light and the love of you through our lives, Father God. I pray breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I am tired of the devil coming to seek, kill, and destroy. And I am praying a breakthrough, Father God, for these are the children of God who obey your teachings, that live by your teachings, Lord God. We do not listen to the world, what the world does, Lord God, but we live and we beat by a different drum. We beat and we live by the drum of Jesus Christ and what he has called us to that we call that we live a life of victory because he has already won the battle over death and even if death is on the horizon where it is on the horizon for all of us even if death is on the horizon we don't we don't necessarily die because Jesus has already won the victory over death that this is the thing that we will transition from this world to be with our father to be with our king to be with the father in heaven and that Lord that we will live eternity for you because of the blood of Jesus and the forgiveness of Jesus, the grace of Jesus. We have been recreated. We are no longer who we used to be. We are not to live in shame. We are not to live in our fear. We are not to live in our anxiety. We are not to live in our uh, uh, sickness, Lord God. We are to live in the peace of who you are. Lord, I speak peace. Peace be still in the name of my brothers and my sisters. Jesus, I speak Jesus into the life of my brothers and sisters, Lord God. I pray breakthrough and I pray new life. I pray new life, Father God. I pray new life into them, Lord God. Lord, from the breath of life, Lord God, I speak the breath of life into my brothers and my sisters this morning. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name we pray. Glory to God. Jesus. Christy Oswald is asking prayer for Laura. She'll be four years old in nine more days and to pray that her teeth um, won't be hurting her. Okay. Pray for little Lori, Lord God, and we just pray for her right now, Lord, and happy birthday, Lori, uh, Laura, and we're just praying for you this morning. Uh, Father God, I just pray right now. That this young girl, she can't get into the dentist because the dentist is being closed, Father God. And Lord, I just pray right now that you will take the hurt and pain out of her mouth, Father God. Lord, I believe in miracles that you can restore teeth. Lord, I believe in miracles where, where teeth that are missing can be grown back in, Father God, because you're that kind of God. You're a God who performs miracles. Lord, I pray right now, I come against any affection in her mouth. I come against every broken tooth in her mouth, Father God. I pray right now, Lord, to remove the pain, Lord God. But Lord, I also pray, Lord, restore her teeth. Restore her teeth. Restore health into her body, through her teeth, through her heart, her mind, and her very soul, Father God. We pray this in the name of Jesus. 
Ashley Devon, specifically prayer against anxiety. Mm. Father God, I right now, I pray for uh, 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 Ashley Devon, Lord God. Was it Ashley? Okay, I'll make for sure. Ashley, I pray for Ashley right now. Sorry, Ashley. I pray for you, Ashley, right now, Father God, during this season, Lord God. Lord, this is a season. We cannot be not anxious. I mean, let's just be real. We're, we, we believe in being real people. But Lord, this is what is relevant. It's Father God, you're bigger than our anxieties. You're bigger than our fears. Our faith is greater than our fears, Lord God. Lord, I become anxious, but once I become anxious, Lord God, I begin to pray. I begin to intercede. I begin to read your word and remember the promises that you have, Father God, for each and every one of us, Lord, and that anxiety goes away. Father God, I pray right now for my sister Ashley, Lord. Lord, take this anxiety away from her, Lord. Lord, fill her with your Holy Spirit. I pray right now as she's sitting in her living room, Lord God. Lord, I pray right now, wherever she is, Lord, God. Lord, anoint her with your power of your Holy Spirit, Father God. Wipe this anxiety out in the name of Jesus. And anyone else that is hearing our voice this morning that is struggling with anxiety. I mean, it, it, to be anxious is one thing, but to be struggling with it, to be overcome by anxiety, Father God. I come against it in the name of Jesus. I speak life into my brothers and my sisters. I pray deliverance in the name of Jesus. I speak Jesus over each and every one of them. I plead the blood of Jesus. Jesus over each and every one of them, Lord God. And Lord, I pray right now, deliver them right now by filling them with the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Lord, and let them begin to speak in another language, Lord. Lord, let them be able to speak, Father God, for their very soul, the very spirit that dwells within them, Lord, begins to speak your name, begins to speak who you are, Father God, that their very soul, the very spirit of them inside them, Lord God, would begin to pray and speak in another language, Lord God, that only you can understand stand Lord God Lord I pray Lord and as they begin to speak in another language Lord God that the, all the cares and the worries of this world Lord God will fall apart Lord God there will be breakthrough there will be healing there will be such a divine and desperate healing Lord God Lord that did that did nothing but the glory of the Lord God the God of Abraham Jacob and our Isaac and Jacob father God that that we know that you are the true God that still lives and performs miracles today Lord God fill them with your Holy Spirit I pray in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus glory to God now Williams has a prayer for um, an increase like a desire for trusting in the Lord more being more disciplined in him yes. keeping him the center and what we do and I think I um, we should combine that with a desire of our leaders. Okay. Amen. Oh, thank you, Fennel. Father God, we just pray right now. We come again in agreement to Fennel's prayer request, Lord, and we just pray right now. Lord, we just pray for such a desire of who you are, Father God. Lord, one of our, one of our core values, Lord, is desperation, that we, that we will be so desperate for who you are, Lord. Lord, that we would be so desperate for who you are, Lord God, that for first, Lord, we would be in the word. We would be spending more time with you. We'd be speaking, uh, spending more time in worship with you, Father God. Lord, I pray, Father Lord, when we have a heart of desperation, when we have a heart of desperation, we turn to you, Father God. And through that desperation comes breakthrough. Through that desperation becomes healing, Father God. Lord, I pray that we become so desperate, Lord, that we would do whatever it is to draw closer to you, Father God. And Lord, I pray that we would draw closer to our spiritual leaders, Lord, that you have placed before each and every one of us, Father God. Even me as a pastor, I have spiritual leaders, Father God. Lord, and that I pray right now that you we have such a desperation lord that we will seek you father god and we will seek those that you have placed to lead us father god in teaching us lord and lord that we will hear what they're teaching lord and we will begin to apply those things in our lives when we begin to apply the life that you have given us the new life that we have in jesus christ when we begin to ap apply and, and allow the holy spirit to work and operate in us father god lord when we come against what we think makes sense lord god and we just 
say to you and say, Lord, you know what? I want all that you have for me, Lord. Lord, I want all you have for me, Lord God. Lord, if you're going to call me to go to Syria, I'm going to Syria. Lord, if you're calling me to go to South Africa or South America or, or, or South, Southern or North Korea, Lord, wherever you're calling us to be, Father God, I'm going to go, Lord. Lord, maybe you're calling me to go into inner city ministry. Lord, maybe you're calling me to go to another state. Lord, maybe you're calling me to go to another job. But Lord God, we are so desperate of what, who for you, Father God, that we're willing to do whatever you call us to do, Father God. Father God, for you call some of us to go and, 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 and teach to the ends of the earth. But Father God, sometimes you just tell us to go to work and share the gospel. Sometimes you just tell us to go to, to work and go to school to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, sometimes you just call us to be the spiritual leaders of our home. To be the spiritual leader over our spouses and spiritual leader over our children. Spiritual leader with our spouses. Father God, I just pray right now, desperation. We're in desperate mode right now, Father God, because of the chaos around us, Lord. But Lord, I pray right now that that desperation will draw us closer to you. Lord, we see it. We're starting to see it. We're seeing it in some people in our church, Father God. But Lord, I'm praying, activate supernatural faith. Lord, activate the wisdom. Activate the, the, the knowledge, Lord God. Activate the, the spiritual gifts, Father God. Operate or activate healings, Father God. Lord, activate uh, uh, prophetic words, Jesus. Father God, we are just praying right now to desperation that we will seek you, Lord God. And through that de desperation, Lord, there will be breakthrough and healing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Paulina Daniel, for those who have mental disturbance, that peace will overcome their thoughts and emotions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Father God, we just pray. We pray for those who struggle with mental illness, Lord. Lord, whether it be uh, a chemical, Lord, maybe it be situational. Maybe, it's, maybe it is um, bipolar, Lord. Lord, maybe it's, it's uh, uh, just anxiety, Father God. Maybe it's depression. Lord, whatever it shall be, Father. Lord, this is a season, Father God, that, that things are, are chaotic. And Father, I just pray for these individuals, Lord, that they will have such a peace come over their mind. Lord, not only do we pray peace over them, Lord, we pray for healing. Lord, who says that you can't deliver somebody from bipolar disorder? Who says that you can't heal those who have chemical, or chemical um, uh, imbalances, Father God, that you can't bring that chemical into balance and deliver them from, from this sickness, Father Lord? Lord, even those, Father God, whose minds have been damaged by accidents, Father Lord, or, or, or um, maybe they got damaged or hurt during birth, Father Lord, that has brought some mental illness to them because of damage, Lord God. God, who says that you can't heal that? Father God, you can heal all that. Father God, we are praying right now in this season. I'm praying for healing. I'm praying for young uh, men and, and young women or even all men and women who struggle with autism. Lord, I pray for peace over them. Lord, I pray peace over all these different disorders that there are, Lord God. But I also pray for healing, that you would heal their minds and heal their, their bodies, Father God. Lord, I pray for those who, who are struggling right now with no hope, Lord, and suicides are beginning to rise. Father God, I pray against the spirit of suicide. I speak the name of Jesus over suicide. And Lord, I, I pray right now, Lord, when your children rise up and allow their light to shine in, in, on Facebook, allow their lives to shine on Instagram, allow their light to shine on Snapchat, allow their light to shine in their neighborhood, in their community, in their families, Father God. Lord, it, it will draw those who are desperate for something to them, Lord God. And Lord, I pray that we're able to share the word, uh, uh, share our personal testimonies, Father God, whether it's how we got saved, Father God, or whether it is about, um, about a, a journey situation that you've changed in our lives, Father, and you have grew us, Lord. Lord, here's the thing. We may never able be able to, to, to witness to somebody in a neighborhood until we clean the neighborhood first. Lord, we may never ever be able to uh, 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 feed somebody's soul until we feed their stomach first. 
Father God, I pray right now, Lord, when we begin to focus on you, and we begin to serve and we take care of the widows and we take care of the, uh, of the orphans, Lord God. We take care of those who are less fortunate. We take care of those who are sick. We take care of those with mental illness or physical Ill illnesses or biological illnesses, Father God. Lord, when we begin to do that, Lord, we, should sh we are able to share our stories, Father God. And Lord, bring them into a life, a new life relationship with you, Father God. And I just pray right now, Lord. I pray healing. I pray deliverance, and I pray that your children will allow their lights to shine. In Jesus' name we pray. That's all we have for today, Pastor. That's all we have today. Church, I just want to thank you again for joining us this morning. Thank you for your grace during our technical difficulties. I, I believe that uh, Luke has it all figured out now. Uh, so hopefully next week we won't see that. Uh, but we just want to say thank you. I, I want to speak this into you. I speak peace to you. I speak life into you. You need to pursue God any way you can. And if you need to speak to somebody, you know, reach out to me. Uh, I, I reach out to Pastor Todd, reach out to Pastor Tony, whatever you need to do, reach out to us and we're here to help you. We may not be able to meet in person, but we have, we have phone calls that we can talk over the phone. We have Zoom uh, meetings that we can do and, and, and talk over Zoom. Whatever we need to do to be with you, to be able to help you during this time. But here's the thing. Stop speaking death. Stop speaking damnation. Start speaking life and peace into your life and into your situation. Let us go and make disciples. Amen. I'm changing it up on our team as we finish this morning. I just felt like when Pastor was speaking he just really began to proclaim the truth of what it is that creates our testimony and that is to speak the name of Jesus so this morning could you do me a favor wherever you are can you just take the hand of the person next to you and can you just sing this song with me and let's speak the name of Jesus over every circumstance let's speak peace in the midst of the storm I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus here it is church your name is power your name is healing your name is life Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety. Every soul held captive by depression, I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is light. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Come on, let's shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout 
Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus your name is power your name is healing your name is life break Every stronghold shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Burn like a shadow. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind, every heart, every mind, Lord of Toledo first in the name of Jesus. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Come on, as we close this morning, just speak it over your neighbor. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there in your presence I speak Jesus